Hi, this is the first video in a brief video series that I'm going to be doing on research in the field of psychology. So, um, yeah, here you just, this is just a silly little cartoon. Um, let's see. So we're going to begin by talking about the experimental method. The experimental method, the, the, the purpose of an experiment is basically just to establish cause and effect. I want to know if one thing causes another. For example, I want to know if playing violent video games causes children to be more violent. You might want to know if eating sugar causes children to be hyper. Um, you might want to know if a medication works. Does this medication cause schizophrenia to go away? Right? So that, that's what an experiment is. It's an it's it's uh, an action that we do to establish cause and effect. And when we begin our research, we begin with actually before we we generate a hypothesis. Typically, we observe, right? We're just paying attention to the world around us, and we make guesses. We do that all the time. Um, I know uh, a lot of us do it about health. I just got off the phone with a friend who is wondering why she's winded suddenly when she goes for walks. So she's been generating all these hypotheses. Uh, is it COVID? Because that's always, you know, the scary question nowadays. Uh, is it high blood pressure? Is she out of shape and not working out? So she's, she's asking questions and guessing. And that's what a hypothesis is. A hypothesis can look like a statement, which would be, in our case with video games, we might say, playing violent video games causes children to behave violently. Or you could pose it as a question. It's the same thing. Does playing violent video games cause children to behave violently? It, it's the same thing. It's just a different way of phrasing it. So that would be a hypothesis, a statement, of a guess. What we think from what we've been noticing. So my friend notices, for example, that there's COVID around and COVID affects your breathing. So that becomes her first guess, right? Okay. An operational definition. I, I start off with that people um, when teaching research in psychology don't often jump this early to operational definition. I think it's really important. It makes sure that we're talking about the same thing and making it measurable. So the operational definition is a statement that we make that defines an element of our study by making it measurable. So what does that mean? So for example, when we ask if violent video games make children behave violently, we have to ask ourselves, what exactly is a violent video game, right? Does it have blood? Are active characters killed or only uh, uh, artificial intelligence characters? Is the violence graphic? What weapons are, are involved? Um, how often is violence part of the game? Are there alternatives to violence for winning? Anyway, so there are a whole bunch of different ways that we could define violent video games. And how we define it is going to make a difference in our research, right? So. An example of an operational definition in our case might look something like a violent video game, for the purposes of our research, right? A violent video game is one in which the player must kill other characters, including AI, in order to win. You don't have to agree with that. Uh, we, uh, it's just an example of how I would make it uh, specific and measurable because this is a yes, no. Do you have to kill other characters to win or not? So it's a yes, no, and it's, it's easy to define what is violent and what is not violent. Okay, let's look at double-blind research. So you have probably heard uh, the term double-blind research, right? You know how you hear on the radio or not the radio, maybe TV when you're watching and there's an ad and and there's a new drug out and it cures, you know, it's miraculous. And then really quick at the end, they say double blind studies. 
Anyway, they're talking about the kind of research that they do. And a double blind study is done so that we can compare our results. So, so I'm gonna back up for a second. If we want to know, let's say, if a drug works, okay? Um, let's say we're interested in whether Prozac cures depression. That's a, that's a good question, right? We want to know, is it, you know, is it going to work or not? So we could give a bunch of people Prozac, right? And ask them how that went for them. The problem is anytime you give people something, it's going to have an effect on them. So what we're talking about here is the placebo effect. And a placebo, for, you can look at my, the, the silly cartoons that I have in this, in this PowerPoint. So the placebo is a fake drug, right? It looks like the drug, the person doesn't know if they're getting it, the real drug or a fake drug. And the reason that we do that is because no matter what you do to people, if you do something to people, they're going to have a reaction. Anything that you do is going to cause a reaction. So you give somebody a pill, you give somebody a pill, say, for depression, you tell them this is an antidepressant, they will probably feel better. They might also feel nauseous and dizzy and headaches and all kinds of things. Right. Basically, if I were to give the whole class a sugar pill, not with sugar, you know, something completely inert, something that has that does nothing. And I said, come back to me tomorrow and tell me how it went. You guys would be vomiting and fainting and this one can sleep and this one can't sleep and stomach aches and you name it. Because whenever we take something, anything, we have a reaction. So in order for us to know, if I give you a pill and say this is an antidepressant, I want to know if you feel better, how much of that is due to the medicine and how much of that is just because I gave you a thing, right? So what I do is I give one group the drug, one group a fake drug that doesn't have any, any active ingredient in it. I tell both that it's an antidepressant. The group that got the fake drug is going to have some reactions. What we do then is we can subtract those reactions from the real drug. Basically saying, well, you know, these people got, you know, 2% of them got nauseous. And with the real drug, 4% got nauseous. So we can assume that half of that is because we gave them something. Anytime you give people something, they have a reaction. I hope that makes some sense. So what we have to do is make sure that people aren't just reacting because we gave them a thing. And that's why we have a control group and an experiment group. In double blind studies, we have a control group and an experiment group. The experiment group gets the real drug. The control group gets the fake drug. And then we compare the two. If both groups come out identical, then we can assume that our drug doesn't do anything. If the placebo group comes out a little bit better and the drug group comes out, the control group comes out a little bit better and the experiment group comes out a lot better, you know, we subtract the little bit from the control group to see how much was really due to the drug in the experiment group. Um, that's the best that I can do in this kind of a video, uh, you know, explanation. It's, it's easier in class when there are, you know, there's a group of us. Here's a silly cartoon for you. Um, so the control group and the out of control group, right? So we get a group of test subjects who are going to 
participate in our experiment, we break them up into two equal groups, give one group the placebo and one group the drug. When we're all done, we compare the two. I'm going to stop this video here and we'll continue with the experimental method in the next video.